So um, we are on chapter 15. Uh, we had a summer assignment to do on Monday, I think. Um, happy Thanksgiving. You don't have anything to do on Friday. <laughs> um, and um, I wanted to do a bit of a traditional lecture on um, some of the material here. And um, I guess what I would start out with is this is the chapter that a lot of you are actually in this class for. I think based on um, individual conversations and some of your welcome introductions, it looks like we have about half the class uh, of people, about half of the class are people who are in allied health field or you are trying to get into allied health field in your program, whether it's Kaiser or uh, technician training, your, the program you're applying to requires that you take a physics. That's why you're taking this class. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, and the reason those programs require physics is actually for what we cover in chapter 15. I mean, ultrasound, not so much. We did the waves a long time ago. But when we talk about radiology, we are talking about x-ray, we are talking about ionizing radiation. And while those programs will do their own training, probably, hopefully, uh, in more detail than we do here, um, what they are hoping in requiring physics as part of their program is that you'll be exposed to do these topics at least once in, your, in the course of your academic study. So, um, so I want you to really lead with that. And that's uh, um, my, reali my realization of that is also why um, if uh, as sometimes in the semester it looked like we are moving through topics super quickly, this is part of the reason why. I wanted to make sure we had close to a full week of time when we got to chapter 15. It's at the end of the textbook, at the end of the semester. It's very easy to give it a short shrift and I wanted to make sure that we don't do that. So, um, let's see. Uh, I won't go through all these 13 sections. Uh, let me just uh, try to point out some things that are interesting. Um, let's see, I think nuclear radioactivity, that is just an introduction to nuclear radioactivity, how it was discovered. Um, it's historically interesting, read it, but, um, oh, oh yeah, it, this is why I didn't want to skip it. It, talk, it introduces alpha, beta, gamma radiation. These are classifications of, of different types of uh, well, I guess it's technically nuclear radiation, um, which all also happen to be ionizing radiation. And um, understanding of this is important in nuclear safety. Um, what these uh, actually are, alpha radiation is helium-4 nucleus. It just happens to be that's a smallest chunk of, chunk of atomic nucleus that happens to get ejected a lot. So it gets its own name, alpha radiation. Beta radiation is actually electron, or it could be positron too, but it's actually an electron that's being emitted from an atomic nucleus. It's a product of a radioactive decay and it has high energy, somewhere between kilo electron volts to mega electron volt. Um, and I guess the thing that separates beta radiation from alpha radiation is that uh, the mass of the electron is much lower than the mass of uh, helium nucleus. And that has a different uh, implications on uh, how much penetrating power it has, how much shielding you, what, or what type of shielding you should have. And finally, gamma radiation, it's a, it's a photon. It's a high energy photon. It's light, technically. Um, it's a, gamma radiation is actually similar to X-ray, uh, but typically it has more energy than X-ray. And like with X-ray, it's very penetrating. It goes through almost everything except for uh, inches of lead shielding. So the uh, section goes in more deep into that. Um, but I wanted to um, point this out specifically because uh, once again, some of you are here as a part of a preparation for your allied health program and understanding these different the types of ionizing radiation from nuclear reaction is, um, it, I, I imagine it's an integral part of uh, training for radiology department. Um, so yeah, uh, there's some historical material here you can read about that. Um, yeah, ionization and range, and um, this section goes over what I was just talking about. Um, 
And I guess the uh, gist of it is alpha radiation um, has the least penetrating power. It gets, uh, it penetrates, uh, well, it gets stopped by even air. It will get stopped by the layer of dead skin cell. So usually alpha radiation isn't too dangerous as long as it's outside your, your body. But if you somehow accidentally ingest the alpha source, which could happen if you're not careful, then that it can be even more dangerous than other types of radiation because the alpha radiation is guaranteed to cause ionization within your body once you are in, once it's in there. Beta radiation is more penetrating of, than alpha radiation, but usually the typical shielding for beta radiation is actually a, a plastic plate. Um, about an inch thick acrylic is a good way to block many of the low energy betas. Um, the higher energy betas might um, go through more um, shielding and um, yeah, different energy range, you, um, yeah, higher energy, you require differential thing. Gamma is the one that's uh, difficult to shield. Um, usually the best way to keep yourself safe from gamma radiation is you stay far away and you stay far away as long as possible. Or uh, we, in the radiation safety, we call this principle ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable dosage. And the way you achieve that is by keeping your distance and limiting your exposure time. Shielding is actually the third and the last line of defense. Um, all right, so there's that. Uh, yeah, I guess most of that important material is there. And there's some talk about radiation detectors and detection mechanisms, Geiger counters. Uh, I think back in the days of uh, Cold War, there were like civil defense Geiger counters that were supposed to tell you if you, um, you need to get to a fallout shelter. <laughs> um, and um, this is a, an example of a, 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 a photomultiplier tube, which can count single photons. And these are fascinating research tools. Uh, unfortunately for this class, it's probably not all that important. <laughs> and the structure of nucleus, nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. Hopefully, um, yeah, read it through that and whatever you understand, great. Uh, <laughs> nuclear decay and conservation laws. Um, yeah, so alpha decay and beta decay are the ones that involve ejecting any actual material. So those are the ones involved in changing the type of atomic nucleus. And in terms of conservation laws, um, I guess there's a homework question on that ha has you count number of protons and neutrons in an isotope. Uh, some of this is probably relevant. Um, usually from uh, in homework, the hint links you to the relevant sections. So you should follow that and use that. Um, let's see. There is one homework question that relates to half-life and activity. Um, let me do that homework question in the, as part of this virtual class session. Because I've seen people struggle with that particular question. So let me do that. So I'll cover half-life then. Um, activity is actually a very specific term that relates to uh, radioactivity. Uh, I guess that's what activity refers to. Um, so read about that, but you know, it. Um, so do read it, please. Um, but uh, don't worry too much about memorizing all of this. I don't think I'm going to be asking you too much detail on if you remember what a backcrawl is. Like, I don't imagine asking you that. Um, Medical imaging and diagnostics. I, as I was hinting at earlier, this is the reason allied health programs require physics. And you know, this is also the reason it's a good idea for doctors to be familiar with the physics, not just the biology, because uh, physical things have uh, biological impacts. Um, or, or oh, sorry, this is more of a tool. Uh, and I think there's actually a, a, an, a Oh, oh wait, uh, that's the assignment that was due on Monday that you were supposed to have done. If you haven't done it, do it as soon as possible, please. Uh, there are videos that you can watch and all the fun stuff. Um, and the biological effects of ionizing radiation is where uh, you learn about, uh, you know, why ionizing radiation is bad, how x-rays can cause cancer. And if you've watched the TV series of Chernobyl, which I haven't seen, so I can't comment on if it's scientifically accurate or not. I haven't seen it. But, you know, that's why um, there is danger associated with nuclear power and uh, care needs to be taken. Um, 
So that, uh, yeah, let me, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, nuclear power is a controversial topic. I have my personal opinions, uh, most of which I'll keep to myself. But um, it, it's important that people do understand the dangers of ionizing radiation and how we keep safe from ionizing radiation. And more importantly, how some types of radiation is, um, let me put it uh, in a polite way, the dangers of some types of radiation, especially non-ionizing radiation, they, the a danger, if any, have not been shown. <laughs> so, you know, but radiation is, um, it, it can be a charged word. And it, that's where I believe a uh, solid understanding of physics is more helpful than anything else. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, um, so uh, read about that, this place. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's a little bit long, but it's, uh, I think this is like the most useful thing out of the chapter. So, um, yeah, and risk versus benefit. This is something that people in medical profession will, um, will um, um, you know, become experts in. Um, it's, a, you know, like when you have cancer and you go through chemotherapy, the drugs that people, uh, doctors use for chemotherapy, it's poison. And, um, and when they use poison for medicine, um, that's, they're doing this uh, calculation, risk versus benefit. What is the benefit of potentially killing cancer cells versus the risk, the predictable side effects, and also uh, lower likelihood of causing a different cancer. Um, yeah. So, um, so these first seven sections are what what will be interest? Uh, what will be most useful and interesting to people who are being required to take physics, <laughs> and the rest of the chapter is actually the things that I'm interested in as a physicist, and that's why I include them. That's why this chapter is super long. Um, um, it, they um, relate to physics as a fundamental science. Uh, well, I guess fusion and fission have some practical impacts such as they are. Um, um, Thermonuclear fusion, sorry, the only practical application of nuclear fusion is um, a thermonuclear bomb. So I don't know how um, <laughs> uplifting that is, but do I talk about thermonuclear bomb? Uh, I might, um, yeah, you can, these are um, attempts at um, peaceful use of fusion, none of which have been successful so far <laughs> um, in making it practical. <laughs> so, now, um, so fusion is uh, refers to when you uh, release energy by combination of lower mass um, isotopes, hydrogen, helium, helium three, tritium. So. Uh, that's what's involved in fusion. Uh, fusion is uh, how our sun produces energy. And in terms of um, uh, artificial efforts at using fusion to generate power, um, the only context in which we have been successful is in military application. And that's uh, probably what connects fusion to fusion better. Uh, the first uh, application of fusion was in a bomb. And I, th that's actually what I wanted to go over, uh, what's called a chain reaction. There's a wonderful fat simulation that illustrates the ideas involved in nuclear fission really well. And I want you to demonstrate that. So um, let me do that shortly. And here I must talk about bomb. Uh, wow, um, I don't. Huh. That's something I need to fix. Okay. I. Uh, I mean, I probably don't talk about, oh, oh, I know, I know why. Nuclear weapons, there's an entirely separate section for that. <laughs> so yeah, it is, sorry, I've been doing bomb talk in the last two sections. And this is the section where um, it'll describe that implication. And, uh, you know, this is piece of modern history. And this is frankly, um, it's the context in which physics has received a lot of public attention and public funding. And the, the reason for that is really uh, what happened during World War II. The World War, yeah, World War II, that's the war in which uh, science and technology mattered a lot. And 
Um, so, so that's when the world's governments started paying attention to, oh, uh, physics, uh, the, these uh, fields of fundamental science and applied technology have, oops, applied technology have um, actual um, implications um, in real world. So there's that, and, and this is where I, pretty sure I do talk about, but I don't talk about this. Um, um, well, I'll talk about the, uh, well, yeah, uh, but here's the description of the bar, how it's made, and um, I'm pretty sure here we do talk about thermonuclear bomb, yeah. So in thermonuclear, uh, yeah, thermo in thermonuclear bomb, a fission bomb is used to create conditions that are similar to in the sun that ignites the fusion and the fusion releases uh, much more energy than fission could do, do by itself. Um, yeah, the last two, three sections are, those are the sections that I'm really excited about. It's about particle physics. It's, uh, um, it's about the fundamental, so, you know, when someone wants to become a physicist, these last two, three sections are what motivates us to uh, do the things that we do. But, um, yeah, well, uh, I include them here so that you can take a look, but uh, I won't be asking you much. Um, uh, either in the homework or in the uh, in the in the exam exam four and the final exam, but um, the stuff are here. It's uh, um, yeah, it, it's the thing. Um, well, I, well, I guess for me personally, I want you to become physicist before this learning about these things. But this is what got me really excited about physics uh, more than the kinematics and free fall. Like those are boring. This is interesting. Um, so yeah, um, and uh, this uh, is not technically actual physics. This is more of an ongoing effort at um, ongoing efforts at um, how do I put it? Um, ongoing efforts at uh, understanding I, the nature better. Um, so uh, GUTs or what we call Grand Unified Theory uh, hasn't happened yet. But this is what motivates um, those of us who work in fundamental uh, physics research. That um, that the the description of nature we have right now it's it's that's not the ultimate theory. That it's only an approximation. It's only a model. That there might be a more unified theory, more fundamental theory that can explain everything else explain the four basic forces, actually three of the four basic forces and all that. Um, so, so this uh, section describes um, the kind of where things stand as far as the search for grand unified theory goes. So this quantum chromodynamics, that's the existing theory of strong force. And this plot is uh, showing you the motivation for grand unified theory. That uh, right now where we are at is around here. We have unification of electromagnetic forces, electricity and magnetism, and uh, what we call weak force or weak nuclear force. Uh, there's a very good experimentally test to the theory that uh, describes unification of these forces. We call it electroweak force. And we see this change in the coupling strength that hints at a possible existence of grand unified theory um, at an energy scale that our current experimental apparatus can't get to right now. So, um, so people have been working with this for like 40 years. 40 years? Huh, I think it is 40 years. Um, there isn't anything there yet, or there isn't anything that's experimentally confirmed yet, but People are still working on it. People are still getting PhDs. And uh, I guess that there aren't any Nobel Prizes until it gets uh, experimentally confirmed. Like super string theory is one of the uh, candidates. And I have my own opinion about string theory that I'll keep to myself. Um, yeah, 